Thank you for joining the Supplement Your Mental Wellbeing webinar. My name is Heather Schofield, and I'm the Education Director here at Biomed. I'm really excited to be talking about supplements for mental health and mental well-being, um, as this is something that is needed more than ever in the time that we're uh, working with our patients and clients and having some uh, easy things uh, and also some more complex things up our sleeves uh, definitely can be handy when we have those patients walking through the doors who do need extra support in their mental well-being. Uh, so here's a few statistics, um, just putting mental health into framework, and these are Canadian statistics. So mental health, one in seven Canadians has used health services for mental issues in 2016 and 17. And by 2022, so this is last year, 5 million Canadians were diagnosed or had diagnostic criteria for mood, anxiety, or substance issues. Um, with anxiety disorders, one in 10 Canadians are affected, and the number of generalized anxiety disorder um, doubled, so people diagnosed with generalized anxiety um, disorder doubled from 2012 to 2022 from 2.6 to 5.2%. Um, and then with depression disorders, 11% uh, of men and 16% of women experience at least one major depression in their lifetime. And this has also increased from 2012 to 2022 to 7.6% that are affected. So as you can see, um, uh, there, there's a, a very big percentage of the population that is affected with mental health um, issues. And then uh, more pointedly is that um, in the recent statistics showing that there are even more people than there were 10 years ago um, that are suffering uh, and could definitely use support in that respect. Uh, also, this is not necessarily a big surprise since we just le uh, left behind, hopefully, a very big um, and stressful set of years. And um, so also with that, mental health is definitely on the rise. So just talking about mental well-being, what is that definition? So mental health is the state of your psychological and emotional well-being. Good mental health is necessary for living a healthy life, and it's the main factor in overall health. When we're talking about our mental well-being, that's more gauged on how we live our lives and how we respond to life's ups and downs. And so it includes things like how do you feel about yourself, uh, the tone of your thought and mindset, how you handle your moods, and how well we bounce back after there's been a disappointment or failure. Uh, there's lots of support out there for these types of things, um, but then we have an additional arsenal of how we can support people with it as well. So these are the types of things when you look up mental well-being um, for ways to nourish yourself. And this is including in self-care. Uh, maybe these are some of the things that you're doing yourself uh, for your own self-care and taking care of your own mental well-being. These may be things that you're recommending out to your patients and clients, and it may be something that patients and clients are just naturally reaching for as well. And it includes things like eating well and being hydrated, uh, exercising, getting out in nature, journaling or writing things down, um, touch and body work like massage, for example, meditation and breathing. And breathing is definitely very important for deep belly breathing uh, to help relax the nervous system and also with the vagus nerve to relax the vagus nerve. Um, a place to safely express emotions and uh, so that you're being heard and listened to, um, getting really good quality sleep and napping if necessary. That's what <laughs> made me think of this picture of a cat. <laughs> Cats seem to always be <laughs> pretty relaxed and sleeping in a cozy spot in a sunbeam. So um, I think that this little kitty could be the epitome of nourishing its mental well being by just having a little snooze there. Um, other ways is connecting and connection. Social connection is very important. Being able to talk and support groups. And then finally, using techniques to calm down the nervous system. So with all of these techniques, there are good ways to nourish well-being. However, there's other ways that we can do that as well. And this is where we start to move into more the nutraceutical, supplement, herbal wor world. And of course, this is the world that we're all um, 
practicing in. And so these are the types of things that we can consider that are pretty straightforward in many ways on how we can help our patients uh, and clients with nourishing their mental well-being above and beyond what they're already doing. So um, in this presentation tonight, we're going to be looking at some of these things um, like uh, different vitamins and minerals, B vitamins, vitamin E, multivitamins, uh, minerals like magnesium, a special branch of probiotics called psychobiotics. And there's two specific strains that we're going to be talking about tonight that actually work on the microbiome gut brain access uh, and support neurotransmitters for good mood. Uh, looking at biologicals like glandulars, in this case, adrenal glandular and hormones, in this case, melatonin, um, that can do some support, uh, different herbs. Uh, and this list by no means is complete, um, but these are some of the herbs that are in some of the formulas I'm gonna be talking about tonight. So this is why they're listed here, including ashwagandha, avena sativa, St. John's wort, passion flower, valerian, and lemon balm. And finally, some specific homeopathics, um, pleocitrum, pleosanivis, which are organic acids for energy, and adrenum, which is an adrenal supplement. So um, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to just jump right in here um, and go through talking about these different categories and then also talking about some of the products that are relevant to that. And then there's some protocols to um, give some examples as well. So looking at supplementation for how we can support our patients, there's a number of categories that we can do that and do that really well. We can support patients and our clients with um, their mood and helping them maintain a good mood. We can help with stress resilience um, and increasing that stress resilience so that they're able to handle more. And when things um, do get stressful, they have the better ability to handle it or if it becomes too much, then they are able to bounce back more quickly. Um, we're uh, able to support by nourishing adrenals, uh, and that is very much, again, about stress and stress resilience and how we manage our stress and how we handle stress loads. And then it also um, supports if people um, and patients and clients are more in adrenal fatigue or exhaustion being able to support and regenerate um, the adrenals, uh, looking at uh, energy levels and vital energy levels are really important um, for feeling well. Getting a really good night's sleep and being able to support patients there um, is also very important for just overall mental well-being, helping to calm the nervous system. And then finally, the one thing I've left till the very end, uh, and what I'm super excited to talk about, um, because we haven't had a formal presentation yet, is talking about the microbiome and the gut brain access and those two psychobiotic strains that I mentioned that um, work on supporting neurotransmitters um, and working on mood and um, anxiety and depression and things like that. Uh, okay, uh, so first we're going to dive into supplementing for a good mood um, and looking at the herbal formula, Neuroplex, uh, talking about B vitamins, talking about this multivitamin that is a lot different than the average multivitamin out there, and talking about biotrenol, which is vitamin E. And <clears throat> so first is uh, Neuroplex. Now, when we're talking about um, mood and good mood, it is the um, main formula that Biomed offers that can really work on mental well-being. Um, so the, the traditional uses um, for Neuroplex, for the herbs that are found in there, and these herbs are St. John's wort, valerian root, passion flower, um, California poppy, and cordialis. Um, they are working to balance well-being in times of low mood, nervous agitation, insomnia, so healthy, healthy mood balance, uh, helping to relieve restlessness and nervousness, calming and relaxing the nervous system, helping to sleep. Um, there are two of the herbs in here which are working um, as sedatives or have sedative properties to help people to calm the nervous system and be able to fall asleep. And then also enhancing the mood or allowing somebody to actually feel better when they're experiencing mild depression and anxiety. 
Now, these herbs have also been clinically studied um, for these types of effects. Um, and so um, you can see here just on the right hand side that um, they, again, are enhancing mood, increasing stress tolerance in case of mild depression, anxiety, sleep issues, nervousness, restlessness, and nervous. Um, a stress nervous system. So basically it's working to help calm things down, increase mood, and just overall make um, somebody feel better. Uh, there is a question here about safety in pregnancy. Um, the one thing I have to say with Neuroplex, uh, it has probably out of all of the in formulas that we carry, it has probably the longest list of contraindications and cautions and warnings. Um, and it's partially because of the St. John's wart, but it's also because of the valerian. And so, and I'd have to actually look at the label and be able to get back to you on um, if it's safe to take during pregnancy. I'm going to lean towards uh, probably not, um, just because of the herbs that are involved in this one. Okay. Um, and so next we have uh multivitamin and mineral or multi vm and this one we talk about the next level multivitamin um and as i mentioned um in addition to the um traditional vitamins and minerals that you would find in this formula and they include so let me just do a quick read right here um hmm. Things like uh, vitamin, there's a bunch of vitamin Bs, uh, vitamin C, CoQ10, uh, magnesium, and iron, zinc, biotin, chromium, selenium, and copper. So in addition to those vitamins and minerals, there also is a whole bunch of other really interesting ingredients. Um, and that includes uh, for energy. So astaxanthin and alpha lipoic acid are in there um, to help improve overall energy. Astaxanthin is a very strong antioxidant, um, and so it's really there to protect the cells. Um, if any of you are BC-based or West Coast-based, um, you may be familiar with the fact that the salmon are running right now. So they're moving from the ocean up the rivers and the salmon, if you've ever been able to witness a salmon run or watch this happen, the salmon, the further they get to their spawning ground, often the redder they are, depending on the species. And this happens to be the astaxanthin um, that is uh, functioning in what you're seeing. And the astaxanthin serving as a protection to try to keep that fish alive at this point for as long as possible since these um, treks back to their spawning ground um, are very arduous. And I, I happen to live close to um, the Seymour River, which is a major river in North Vancouver. And so the salmon are running right now. And it's really cool to be able to see um, see that process, but also see that astaxanthin is alive and well, keeping these fish uh, as whole as possible. Um, okay, and then, um, so just back to the energy bit here. So, um, both of these ingredients are helping with stamina and endurance and increasing mitochondrial and cellular energy production. Um, we also have with the multi VM, the next level stress resilience. And so there's ashwagandha, there's the B vitamins and vitamin C. So supporting adrenal gland function, um, supporting stress and also, um, improving mood. And then the last is this next level protection. So there's a mental and cognitive function with the B vitamins and vinpotin. Um, and so working on cognitive function, brain and nervous system health, neurotransmitter production. And this is where this actually is very important when we're talking about um, mental well being is um, the neurotransmitters um, being produced and functioning within the body. Also, the brain and the nervous system, of course, are a big part of mental well-being as well. Um, these ingredients are also helping with focus and memory. And um, so then we would move on to the antioxidant component. And so, again, there's the alpha lipoic acid, the astaxanthin, the CoQ10, the B vitamins, and the vinpocetin as well. And so, again, they're working um, in this respect, you know, from a neurological um, in addition to other types of things. And so uh, with this multivitamin, 
uh, and mineral, not only are you getting a complete multi and mineral, but then you have these added ingredients into it that um, actually in this case would be a very great way to support mental well-being, especially if you have a client or patient and you can only choose one thing for them. If the multi VM is appropriate, then you also have all these enhanced aspects to it, which would be really helpful um, to support their mental well-being. Okay, and then next, um, talking about biotrienol, which is tocotrienols. It's part of the vitamin E family. Um, the tocotrienols, they have a longer tail than the, the typical tocopherols that most of us are familiar with with vitamin E. And why I included this in here is vitamin E uh, is basically like a brain food. Um, and it's really important for the brain and brain protection. Um, which then brings us to the nervous system and cognitive function. So into healthy mental well-being, brain health, neuroprotection, and cognitive function are actually really important um, things to support. Um, healthy brain cells are going to overall allow us to have more mental um, function and cognitive function. And so that we can kind of stay, stay doing the things that we need to do in life and thinking about that. Also, uh, to improve mental well-being, um, if somebody's had some sort of brain injury, uh, whether it's a concussion or a stroke or a TIA, um, biotrienol or the tocotrienols that are found in biotrienol have been studied to enhance recovery for the white matter lesions um, after stroke and uh, TIA and after uh, concussions. And so this is a very important overall um, neuroprotective uh, and brain formula. Um, and then uh, in addition, um, there is the hair growth component and the skin glowing component. Uh, while that may not be 100% linked to mental well being, uh, it definitely is a nice side effect. Um, of having uh, more hair growth and healthy hair, because uh, in some cases, for some people, that's important and it will make them feel good about how they appear. Hmm. Okay, and so then finally here, uh, this is just a little protocol um, on mood support. So the combination of Neuroplex plus B complex um, really does work. Uh, from supportive herbs and B vitamins to promote that. Um, mood uh, for calm nervous system, improving sleep, and helping to relieve nervousness and re uh, restlessness as well. Okay, <clears throat> so then we're going to move on here. Um, just, okay, just before we move on, this is actually a good time for me to just check into the chat room. So if you've got any questions, um, of course, please type it in there. Um, and yes, I think that uh, a whole lecture on products that are safe in pregnancy would be um, a great lecture. Um, the one thing is, uh, just as a side note, uh, for a majority of um, natural health products, uh, it is required by Health Canada to be putting on the label for pregnancy and breastfeeding um, under caution and warning. It's not for every single product, but it's for a large majority of them. And so one of the general rules, of course, if it doesn't have that statement about safety with pregnancy or breastfeeding on the label under cautions and warnings or under contraindications, then typically that product would be safe. Um, if it's under a caution and warning, then um, that is about the healthcare professional <laughs> looking to see what the product is and what the circumstance is um, with um, the patient uh, that is pregnant or breastfeeding, if it is appropriate or not, depending on the state of their health and what types of things they're taking. And if it's in a contraindication, then that's a big no. And so it's not to be used during pregnancy and or breastfeeding, depending on what it says in the contraindication. Um, the one very big general rule that I always follow um, if you're looking at drainage and detoxification is you do not want to do that while somebody is pregnant or is breastfeeding. You don't want to move toxic load um, that potentially could um, 
be exposed to a growing fetus or also uh, coming out through breast milk. And so that's just um, kind of as a general thing, like liver detoxing, kidney detoxing, lymphatic, or any sort of detoxing usually is, as I mentioned, a big no-no. Okay, great. Um, so then let's start talking a little bit about stress resilience and um, nourishing the adrenals. So some of these products, they're repeat products, and so we won't review them again, um, but just so that they're in the category so you can have a quick view of what it is. Um, and so, of course, B vitamins are really important for the adrenals uh, and also stress in general. Um, the the uh, adrenal glands um, eat uh, or drink or consume B vitamins um, when you're stressed. So it's something that um, is really important to be able to be taking if um, somebody's under stress, which loads of our patients are under stress. Um, magnesium is also very important. Multi-VM, as we already just talked about. Um, ashwagandha, adrenoplex, and adrenum. So those are more the adrenal formulas. We're going to um, spend a bit of time talking about them now. <clears throat> All right. Um, so adrenoplex. Um, this is an adrenal formula that is an herbal and glandular, adrenal glandular formula. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, these images, uh, these are interesting. Where did you get them? Or you also might be thinking, oh, I've seen these images before. Um, where have I seen them? Or you might be thinking, oh, yes, I ordered that handout on Adrenoplex, and this is the information from that. Um, so why I say that is uh, we have a lot of content um, and patient practitioner um, support um, and reference material that um, is available. And uh, a lot of this information I've actually pulled out of the handouts for these specific products. And so this is the content that's pulled out of the Adrenum handout. Um, they're available on our website. Um, you can download a PDF and print it out. Or alternatively, um, when you're placing an order with Biomed, you can request to have um, the handouts added to your order at no charge. And so if there is any handouts, um, that you think would be helpful to be able to hand out to patients, then um, you, you're more than welcome, of course, to use them. They were built for you as resources, and they're also written for the patient. And so generally, you know, they're fairly straightforward in explaining what things are for. We've tried to work towards having them very visually appealing as well. So um, with Adrenum then, um, this is very much about a fatigued uh, and exhausted patient. Um, it's working to support the adrenals and then helping with stress, helping with um, mental focus, helping with energy and helping with mood and sleep. Um, so with adrenal fatigue, um, the initial stages, the adrenals are overactive, responding to stress. There can be a lot of energy in this um, stage uh, where with the cortisol running high, um, you're burning candles at both ends and you feel pretty good. Also, the sympathetic nervous system might be really revved up and it might be that the cortisol is starting to become high in the later part of the day. Uh, so that's also what gives you lots of energy. And then as you start to move to stage two, this is when the cortisol levels start to drop and you're starting to potentially feel tired and the low mood. If you catch it here and you really make some big changes, slow things down, um, get lots of rest, um, and do things to support your adrenals rather than stimulating them, then in a lot of ways you can come back fairly easily without needing to do a lot of things. But of course, you know, there's definitely some herbals and supplements and vitamins that are helpful to get you back to normal. And then when you get into stage three, um, sometimes people say this is stage three or stage four. This is when the cortisol levels are really low. Uh, there's complete exhaustion, constant tiredness, irritability. It's like the battery has worn out or you're wound <clears throat> down and there's just no more energy and resources. Um, and so this in this adrenal fatigue or burnout um, stage, it's really hard to recuperate or as you're starting to feel better, uh, you push yourself a little bit and you're back exhausted again, or there could be the um, wired and tired where you're exhausted, but by the end of the day, when it's time to actually rest and fall asleep, you're not able to. 
Um, <clears throat> and so in any of these stages, uh, Adrenoplex is very useful. So it's working to help with fatigue and exhaustion, low energy in the afternoon, the wired and tired that I just mentioned, a reliance on caffeine to keep you going, um, hangry or that really irritable uh, when hungry, irregular sweating. Sweating can be an indication of the adrenals, um, especially if it's between 4 and 5 a.m. in the morning if you wake up and you're hot. Um, that's often an adrenal time. Uh, weight gain, lightheadedness, easily startled or really jumpy, a tendency to get sick easily, uh, constant stress, sugar and salt cravings, and depression and anxiety can all be symptoms of adrenal fatigue. And <clears throat> so um, with Adrenoplex, it really works on supporting the adrenals and getting the adrenals back up functioning, which helps bring... Um, less tired, less fatigue, less exhaustion. So increasing energy, improving mood, allowing sleep to be better balanced, better concentration, um, and then increase stress resilience. So being able to handle stress loads better or bounce back from them, uh, improving immune health, physical endurance, um, helping to support blood sugar metabolism and adrenal gland and repair and maintenance. Um, so, um, that is Adrenoplex. And just, uh, sorry, here we go. Okay. So then um, a different way to support the adrenals is using ashwagandha. Uh, ashwagandha um, is an adaptogen um, similar to rhodiola, and that is working to rebalance the body and mind. The one thing about ashwagandha is it's not for everybody it is part of the nightshade family and so if you've got patients that are sensitive to nightshades like tomatoes and eggplant and peppers then ashwagandha may not be the thing for them so just file that in the back of your mind um because ashwagandha um it's beloved but also there's some people that just don't handle it very well uh where it's working to support mental well-being and stress resilience in the adrenals is it's it is a big stress resilience herb um, it works to decrease cortisol levels and decrease C-reactive protein. So that helps um, relieve stress. Um, it helps with focus and concentration. Uh, it helps to increase energy uh, and boost energy and boost strength. Um, and then also it helps with sleep. Um, so better sleep often equals less fatigue, and that also can help with the mood as well and decrease irritability. So there's quite a few aspects on how um, this herb is working for mental well-being. Um, the other thing to add in with this ashwagandha is it's the sensorial ashwagandha. And so it's a highly studied um, and very good quality ingredient um, using three different bioactive ingredients of ashwagandha um, that, that have the different aspects of cellular function, immune response, and stress response. Um, and then there are uh, 14 different clinical studies that back that have been studied to uh, including the stress resilience and energy levels. Okay, and then the last thing in this category that I was going to talk about nourishing your adrenals. There's some patients that just can't handle having their adrenals stimulated. So for the sensitive patient or the patient that is uh, more into this, the deeper stages of adrenal fatigue and exhaustion, nourishing the adrenals before pushing the adrenals, um, maybe the technique. And so adrenum, it's a very gentle adrenal formula. Um, it is homeopathic in nature. And so what it's doing instead of um, as an adaptogen, it's not an adaptogen and it doesn't um, uh, work to kind of push the adrenals. Instead, it's a nourishing formula. And so it is working on that exhaustion and fatigue and burnout, feeling frazzled, stress, uh, the 3 p.m. crash, the 4 to 5 a.m. sweats, and the sugar and salt cravings. So that's all part of this picture. Um, and also for people who've had long periods of stress, uh, who maybe have been burnt out, they feel better and now they're burnt out again. And so with this nourishing component, um, you'd use the 30 drops in water three times a day. And... <clears throat> 
uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, so in here, there's a whole bunch of different homeopathic ingredients, including zinc, zinc and selenium in a D8. So what that means is that it's on a cellular salt or kind of a cellular nutrient level to really help nourish the actual cells. Um, sometimes people look also at this formula and they see that there's homeopathic um, caffeine or caffeinum in here. And so the other thing to just mention about that is, of course, we think about caffeine and we think about stimulation. In this case, as uh, with a homeopathic, you're looking at the picture. So if it's a like a somebody, if you can imagine drinking too much caffeine or having too much coffee or tea, and then the body reacting in that kind of way, that's how the homeopathic, that's the picture the homeopathic is going to work on. So a very stimulated or a very exhausted type picture. Um, and I wanted to mention that because sometimes people, um, especially patients or the end user, get a little bit concerned if they think there's actually caffeine in there, but instead it's the homeopathic that's working um, the opposite of what actually caffeine would be doing and healing things from it instead. Okay, um, and so here are some um, suggestions for adrenal support. Um, so there's adrenum, as we just talked about, for restorative adrenal formula at 30 drops in water three times a day, or there's adrenoplex, and that's the adrenal glandular and herbs, and that's one to two caps twice a day. Um, if patients or clients are in deep fatigue and exhaustion, you can use adrenum first, and as they start to feel better, then you can switch them over to adrenoplex. And then other things to consider, of course, is B-complex, um, one to two caps with food daily and magnesium, uh, one cap a couple of times a day. Then other things, if somebody is really in adrenal burnout and exhaustion, lots of rest and recuperation, healing, warm and restorative foods, but not hot, hot and spicy foods. Um, some of the standard <laughs> remedies, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Uh, Multi-mineral, magnesium, acid-base balance, uh, being able to express emotions, don't swallow, don't suppress things, working on personal power, um, and again, getting lots of rest and recuperation and giving yourself permission to be able to do that as well. Okay, so then talking about energy levels, um, again, adrenum and adrenoplex are part of helping to boost the adrenals, so boosting energy. Uh, we also have uh, B12 folate, which is a sublingual um, vitamin B12 and folate formula, and then two Sanum products as well. Um, and so I am going to go through a few of these guys next. So just talking about energy levels, um, Pleo Citro and Pleo Sanivis are two very interesting formulas. If Sanum is something that you haven't um, ever learned anything about or you haven't dove kind of into or haven't tried, then these two formulas are base Sanum formulas to work on the terrain in the milieu. It's very much about energy production or supporting the mitochondria, which is also energy production. Um, so Pleo Citro, it's citric acid, and it's used um, as part of the Krebs citric acid cycle, which is happening inside the cells, and that's producing ATP, and ATP is our units of energy. And so if somebody really needs to get the cellular function of energy increased, then Pleo Citro is the formula to use. Um, it comes in drops and it also comes in um, tablets and those tablets just dissolve under the tongue and they're a little bit sweet. So um, they actually taste quite nice. Um, so both of the formulas come in those forms. Um, for those of you that are listening that um, can do injections or IVs, Sanum also has uh, sterile ampules, otherwise known as SIPs. Um, and those are available. And then Sanivis also has ointment for any topical use. Um, and so with Pleo Citro, uh, the main thing that I just want to talk about um, is that energy production. And so these are for the exhausted, fatigued, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue um, type patients. Pleo Sanivis, these um, is working in many ways, but the mitochondrial respiration and increasing energy, it's very much about those patients that 
um, have a really hard time recovering, especially after exercise. They tend to be crampy. The muscles are crampy. There's a lot of aches and pains and their energy is really low. Um, then pleosanibus is relevant um, and it's L positive lactic acid. So what it's doing is it's prompting the body to um, excrete D negative lactic acid. And that's the lactic acid that is a byproduct of um, the muscles and the tissues and the cells um, doing the things that they do. And it's a byproduct of the mitochondrial respiration as well. Um, and so L positive or pleosanibus helps to prompt the body to flush that out. So that helps the body overall feel better. Also, it's working on the mitochondria to increase the energy. Okay, um, so then next, we're gonna move into talking about the nervous system. And so there's a few different formulas here that we haven't talked about, and that includes Avena Sativa. So Avena Sativa, it's um, one of the Nesman formulas that is an herbal formula, and it's working um, to support the nervous system. It's a multi-herbal formula that includes um, a whole bunch of different things, but things that you'd be familiar with is lemon balm or melissa, hops, uh, oat, which is a venus sativa, peppermint, pulsatilla, St. John's wort, valerian, vervain, and uh, primula, and um, then there's a few others there as well. So this formula as a multi-herbal works to calm the central nervous system. And that's the main thing that um, if you remember a Venus sativa and you remember calming the nervous system, then that formula is a really easy one to remember um, just as a general working to support the nervous system. It works on the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It calms nerve conductions. It helps to regulate circulation. Um, and overall, because it's calming things down, it allows um, the um, end user of using a venous sativa to actually handle stress better. So things like nervous system disorders, nervousness, restlessness, hyperactivity, insomnia, depression, heart palpitations, hypochondria, and hysteria are types of things you could use it for. So in addition to calming the nervous system. The other place you can use it is to calm the nervous system before sleep. So if you've tried many things and with patients and the things aren't really working well, then the Vena Sativa definitely is one to think about. Um, and so if you're using it like a sleep aid, then uh, you would uh, use it before bed and just before bed. If you're working and using it just in general um, to support the nervous system, um, then you could use that throughout the day. Um, Dr. Gasper just asked a question, um, is a venous sativa like Simvita? It actually um, works in a very similar fashion. Um, and especially if you're a tester, just in general, um, for those testers that are listening tonight, um, if you're testing uh, something to work on the nervous system and it's not testing or not testing as you expected, always have a venous sativa in the mix um, because if other things aren't testing, often a venous sativa will. And it does work on calming the sympathetic nervous system and just ch chilling the nervous system out in general. And um, uh, it, oh, the, so the other thing too is um, it's got some similar formula or sort of ingredients as Neuroplex, but not as much um, in quantities. So therefore uh, there's a less of a contraindication list on this one. So if Neuroplex is something that can't be used, a Venus sativa can be something that can be considered. And then supplementing the nervous system with B vitamins. So B12 folate um, is a multivitamin, or sorry, a B vitamin, a two B vitamins that is essential for working on the nervous system. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of content on this slide. <laughs> um, so the first kind of thing to note is it's a sublingual lozenge, and so it dissolves quickly under the tongue. It tastes really nice. Um, and it's the biologically active forms of B12 and folate in the methylcobalamin and the methylfolate form. So what that means is that it actually absorbs across the mucous membrane um, in the mouth and straight into the bloodstream. And why that's important is because there are a lot of out 
adults out there that have low levels of B12 for lots of reasons. Um, the older we get, um, our digestion isn't as uh, robust as it had been. If there's any digestive issues, then B12 may not be absorbed very well. If there's low stomach acid, then that actually becomes an issue. Um, so B12 is not absorbed as well. Um, Vegetarians and vegans uh, may not be getting adequate amounts of B12, vegans specifically, because um, B12 is found in animal protein. Um, there's certain medications like acid blockers and diabetic drugs that can interfere with B12 absorption and other things like alcohol consumption as well. And so you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, I have lots of patients or, oh, this sounds a bit like me. Um, and so using a sublingual B12 actually solves kind of all of the issues of the digestive um, absorption um, component. Um, the other thing too is um, if you again are an injector and you can inject B12, um, sometimes patients need support in between injections to keep their B levels up. And so you can use this kind of in between that or to um, extend the amount of time in between that's needed. Um, and then, so just talking about uh, B12 and folate um, from the mental well being component, um, boosting energy, promoting healthy sleep, and working on the nervous system um, is where it really shines. So, um, needed for the nervous system for the brain protects neurological disease protects from aging helps to prevent cognitive decline it works on the myelin sheath uh, to help to keep that strong um so kind of in that neuroprotective space um and then also it it can work um in improving red blood cell formation and so if it's a b12 or folate um deficiency that's causing an anemia which is then going to cause low energy um, by supplementing, you're going to get the energy levels back as well. And um, so that's how B12 and folate kind of play in all of this. Um, personally, uh, because I'm vegetarian and vegan most of the time, um, it's something that I take. Uh, I don't necessarily take it every single day, but I'll take it for a week and maybe I'll double the dose as per what my naturopath recommended and then take a break for a couple of weeks. So you can cycle it a little bit or you can definitely take it every day because it is a, a high dose. Um, there is. Um, <clears throat> Turn it here. There is five milligrams of methylcobalamin and there's one milligram of methylfolate. And so you can build up the stores of um, the B12 and the folate in the body. And so it's not necessarily something um, that uh, you just have to take every single day. But if you need to build your stores up, then it works well. And if you need to maintain stores, then that works as well. Um, okay. And um, so then let's move into a good night's sleep. Um, melatonin is one of the things I want to talk about. Um, this information was pulled from our melatonin handout um, in case it looks familiar or in case it looks like something that you want to have uh, for your practice. And so uh, with melatonin, um, it's an essential hormone that regulates sleep. Um, decreased melatonin production can cause sleep issues and uh, decreased melatonin production happens with aging uh, and with lifestyle factors, the kind of modern day life that a lot of us lead with artificial light, exposure to electrosmog and computers and screens and blue light um, and the pineal gland calcifying. Like there's a number of factors that lead to decreased melatonin production, at least from the pineal gland. And so using melatonin then can actually help um, not only help people fall asleep and stay asleep and improve their quality of sleep, uh, it also can reset the circadian rhythms. Um, it is one of the strongest antioxidants in the body. Uh, by helping to get into deeper sleep, including stage four sleep, what it will allow you to do is that's when the detoxing component or detoxing happens in the body. So there's that anti-aging and detoxing component of melatonin as well. Uh, it's very fast acting. 
we have it in two forms. We have a spray, which is a one milligram spray and a 10 milligram lozenge. And so there's a variable dosing depending on uh, what you want to use it for. Um, and then there's always that question <laughs> about addiction and does your body get used to it? There's been some very long-term studies to show that even after using high dose of melatonin for um, years at a time, uh, it doesn't actually create any sort of addiction or dependency on the melatonin. Um, and so just a few other things to mention about melatonin is there's an individual melatonin dose. Um, so if you have a hard time falling asleep at night, um, in addition to making sure that there's no screens looked at for at least an hour and the lights are low and that, you know, there's kind of more relaxing versus stimulating behavior before bed. Um, then with the difficulty falling asleep, you can use one to 10 sprays or one lozenge, um, 30 minutes, hour 60, 60, 30 minutes before bedtime. If you're waking in the night, then you can use melatonin in the night. Um, you don't want to take it one hour before you're waking up in the morning because it can be, it can make you groggy. So in the middle of the night, if you need help getting back to sleep, then you can use the melatonin to do that. For jet lag, um, you can use it to get yourself onto um, the correct time zone. And so you wait until it's time to actually go to bed uh, in whatever time zone that you're in. And then that will help you get uh, established into the new time zone patterns. Um, for people with shift work, um, you would be using the melatonin uh, kind of the opposite of when you would typically be taking it. So if you're working all night and then you're getting ready to fall asleep in the morning, then you would take the melatonin as to what your sleep schedule would be opposed to what light and dark schedule is. Um, for age specific sleep aid, um, again, um, as I mentioned with the calcification of the pineal gland, um, there's less melatonin that's available from the pineal. And so this is basically like a supplement, um, to support and it's the same dosing 1 to 10 sprays or 1 lozenge, um, before bed. And just as a side note, if you're wondering about this calcification of the pineal gland, if uh, you've got patients or clients that are drinking water that's uh, been like has fluoride added to it, fluoride is a known um, thing that can calcify the pineal gland. So it can be more common than one thinks. Um, I grew up in Ontario, in Toronto and the water is fluorides added to the water there. Fortunately, where I am here in Vancouver, there is no fluoride in the water. Um, so that's one of the things to, to keep, keep in the back of your mind. The nice thing about fluoride is you can use a charcoal filter on water um, and that will help to remove it. So you don't have to go into any extensive things for that type of water purification or filtration. Okay, and then here's the last point, and this is the point that is actually important to listen to because it's not always well known. Um, I hear it a lot. I hear it from patients. Um, I hear it from just general kind of family and friends and people in general, and then I also hear it from practitioners. Um, I don't do well on melatonin. Um, so interestingly enough, I sometimes like to think about what is the body trying to tell us? So if somebody takes melatonin and they get increased restlessness or their sleep gets worse, then it may be that the melatonin is not being absorbed very well. So this formula does have B6 in it, which does help with absorption, but you can also use uh, the amino acid L-glycine to help improve melatonin tolerance um, and um, uptake. If somebody finds that taking melatonin is too stimulating, then this is, can be a sign for dysbiosis or candida overgrowth. And so working on candida, so stop the melatonin and then work on um, getting a rebalance or kind of clearing a candida overgrowth out. Um, and you can use something like the candida fix kit or candida program to support that. Um, if somebody gets a headache after using melatonin or that melatonin hangover, which is a very groggy feeling and tired, groggy feeling, this can be a sign that the liver needs some big support for detoxification. So again, you stop taking melatonin and instead switch over to doing a liver detox. 
Um, and then finally, if somebody has nightmares from taking melatonin, uh, because melatonin helps you get into deeper REM sleep and also deeper stage four sleep, uh, it puts you into deep sleep. And often that's where the nightmares, if there's any sorts of stress, major stress or underlying psychological issues. Um, and so working with a therapy that's going to help um, deal with that would be ideal. Okay. And so then lastly, just as a sleep support, um, for melatonin, um, as I mentioned, one lozenge or one to 10 sprays before or at bedtime. Um, and then there's as a, there's a, like a rundown here of sleep, jet lag, um, shift work, or resetting the circadian rhythms, the different things to do. Um, if you're working on detoxing, um, or there's many cancer clinics that also use higher dose melatonin, like up to 50 milligrams or even sometimes higher than that. So the lozenges can technically be used to support that as well. Okay, we are getting just to the end here. So we just have a couple more uh, slides to go through. And so this is what I wanted to save to the very end. Um, it's a very new formula for Biomed. It's called Probiome and it's a probiotic um, that is manufactured uh, in Quebec um, under the name Cerebiome. And they have done some incredible studies to show that the two strains of probiotics in Probiome work on the microbiome gut brain access. And so um, this is on the inside of that uh, Probiome flyer. And this kind of talks about what that all means. And so Probiome also. Um, uh, known as psychobiotics. So psychobiotics is a branch of probiotics that work on mood, stress, mental and well-being, um, and the microbiome gut-brain access. Um, so cerebiome, so the probiotic strains found in probiome, they're the first in Canada that actually have health claims um, that work to calm everyday stress and alleviate low mood or depression and anxiety. There was five clinical human clinical studies to show that it regulates the microbiome gut brain access um, and has a positive influence on mental health. Um, they're also shown to be clinically safe, natural and effective way to support physical and psychological stress response. Um, and so I still, it blows my mind that we can use probiotics to work on this aspect of mental health and mental well-being without necessarily needing to take a lot of other things. Like if we take a probiotic, which of course is really good for the microbiome in general, we can also have these positive effects, especially if it's a stressed out, anxious, or depressed patient. Um, so uh, I've got the strains on the next slide, so I'll mention that in a minute. Um, and so one of the first studies was just showing on stress and that it was a 44% decrease on reducing stress um, and reducing cortisol as well. Um, so things that probiome or the probiotics and probiome are working on, of course, the mental wellness, um, since that's the topic. Um, stress, anxiety, and low mood or mild depression, um, it helps to reduce and alleviate um, all of these things. Um, and so reducing anxiety, improving depression symptoms, reducing um, and improving response to everyday stress, and then having a positive effect on lifting the mood, uh, feeling less anxious, uh, increasing feelings of pleasure and improved sleep. Uh, how this is all happening, is working mainly on the neurotransmitters and the hormones. So these two strains of probiotics have been shown to decrease cortisol. It helps to regulate the neurotransmitters, serotonin and tryptophan. And then finally, it normalizes dopamine and norepinephrine. Um, <clears throat> they have also been shown to improve sweet sleep quality and working on the brain and the nervous system. It's also these species, because of this microbiome gut brain access have a, a positive effect on the vagus nerve, uh, prevent neuroinflammation of the limbic system, which can be part of the stress response. And it is also helping with neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, so nerve um, regeneration and the adaptive capacity for the nervous system. So there's a lot of things that are happening <laughs> with taking these two strains of probiotics. 
Of course, they have the, the immunity and the gut health components that are also helpful. And um, IBS, um, which, you know, can definitely affect and be um, a negative effect on mental well-being. It's very helpful in um, that type of condition as well. Okay, so uh, the last thing here um, is uh, just supplementing with probio. So again, day-to-day -day stress, anxious feelings, low mood, nervous stomach, IBS can be part of that, stress-related gut symptoms. Um, the two strains are Lactobacillus helvicticus, Rosel 52, and Bifidobacterium longum, uh, Rosel 175. Um, and the mode of action, anxiolytic, so helping to relieve anxious symptoms, working on the microbiome gut-brain access. Um, and... Then um, the rest is working kind of in the immune, mental health, and gut health space. Uh, okay, and that's it. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. One more thing with this is probiome. Um, the dosing is one capsule once a day. Uh, so it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward <laughs> on uh, using that. Uh, it tests really well. So for those testers that are on tonight, um, it's a probiotic that tends to test well, and um also kind of working in response to a healthy mood balance and also tests well in combination with other things that you're using so potentially you might be using homeopathics for um, mental health and clearing emotional trauma or maybe you're using different herbs to be able to support um uh, or different vitamins and minerals, as we talked about. So probiome tests really well and is like a nice mix to be added into that. Okay, and then thank you. <laughs> thank you for attending. And thank you for learning more about how to supplement uh, your mental well-being.